Well, welcome back, Science Warriors, to our first video of our lecture series here in the Atlas Academy 6th grade science. The first one we have today is a discussion and understanding of elements. So we have two learning objectives for today, so two things that we need to walk away and have learned. The first of which are that elements are pure substances represented by chemical symbols. And the second being, of course, limited numbers of elements make up the spheres of Earth. And we're going to get into more detail about what that means here shortly. So why don't we just jump into that? Okay, so in order to take your notes today, you will need to set up your notebook paper uh, just like you see it on the screen. This is the template we went over in class for Cornell notes, but we're, what we did in class was a little bit more simple. If you look, these are the things that you must include. First off, we need a heading. Okay, we need your name, class period, and date. Second, you need your EQ. The very top line of your notebook paper should be where you put the EQ. We also need to set up the three sections of Cornell notes on the rest of the notebook paper. So we need our section for questions, our actual block for notes, and then our summary section. Questions, of course, go on the left-hand side. Notes should be the largest block, okay? Make it as large as you can to still have space for the others. And then lastly, the summary should take up about four lines here at the bottom of your paper. Now, do remember that if you run out of space on the front of your notebook paper, you can continue your notes on the back. So feel free to use up your paper as you see fit. Now, today's essential question is going to be what are elements, how are they organized, and what are common elements on Earth? So take a moment to pause the video and go ahead and set up your paper now. Okay, well then let's go ahead and get started. But before we get to talk about elements, we need to talk about a few things that are intertwined with what elements are. The first of which is matter. Okay, matter is, of course, anything that is made up of mass and that takes up space. So, I am made up of matter. You are made up of matter. The camera that is recording me right now is made up of matter. The air that I'm breathing is made up of matter because it all has mass and it does take up space. So, no two things can occupy the same space if they are made of matter. Kind of like my hands. If my hands come together, I cannot squish them to where they become one hand, okay, they're still two. So therefore, that is one of the properties of matter, is that they have mass, and then our new term, which is volume, which basically means it's the amount of space something takes up. Now on the screen you have some examples of how we can determine volume of certain shapes, but we don't have to worry about that today. But when we start our discussions on density as a physical property of matter, we will need to understand volume a little bit more in detail. Now, for the next couple of terms that we need to make sure that we understand is mass and weight. Of course, mass and weight seem very similar and they're easily confused, but they are actually quite different. Mass can be measured with a triple beam balance and we also have uh, digital scales that will measure the mass of an object. And typically these readings are listed out in milligrams, grams, or kilograms, which are all part of the metric system. Mass indicates to us how much stuff, how much matter is inside of an object. Okay, so for instance, this pencil. Okay, this pencil, if I was to put it on the triple beam balance, it would tell me how many grams this pencil okay, has of mass. Now when it comes to weight, it is quite different. We still use a scale, but it's a slightly different type of scale. We use a weight scale. And weight scales usually measure in ounces and pounds, okay? especially here in the United States. In other countries, they also use the metric system for their weights as well. So when I get the mass in, in grams of this pencil, and then I put this on a weight scale, Okay, that measures its weight, we should see different things. Now, weight is just the effect of gravity's pull on this pencil, whereas mass is not affected 
by gravity. Mass is the same for this pencil, whether it be here on Earth, on Mars, Jupiter, or just out in space. The mass will never change, but the weight will change drastically depending on the effect of gravity. Okay, so now that we have a slight understanding of these terms of matter, mass, weight, and volume, let's get talking about elements. Elements have three uh, characteristics that make them elements. First off, they must be made of matter. Second, they must be a pure substance. Third, they cannot be break broken down any smaller. Now you will see on the screen a picture of what is called an atom. An atom is the smallest form an element can take. This is also some of the smallest things in our universe. Okay? These are what make up everything that has matter. So trillions and trillions and trillions of atoms must be lined up next to each other just to make the thickness of this post-it note. Now, the width of this post-it note takes even trillions and trillions times more so atoms are extremely tiny and they make up so many different things anything that you can experience with your eyes your nose your ears your taste buds okay they are made up of atoms now because elements are pure substances meaning that they are made up of only one kind of atom scientists have decided to organize the different elements that exist or that we have been able to discover into what is called the periodic table of elements. Okay, they use chemical symbols to represent different elements. Okay, as an example, hydrogen is a very, very common element. It's probably one of the most common elements in our universe. Well, on the periodic table, its chemical symbol is H. Well, if we come over here to the chemical, uh, to the periodic table, we can see it right here, okay, and it has that symbol H. What this does is this allows us to not have to write out the name of all the elements when we use the periodic table. Because of its organization, we can actually figure out information about specific elements and how they can combine with others to make new things. Now, because of that weird organization, we have what's called groups and periods. Now, for our purposes, we are not going to worry about the bottom section of the periodic table down here. Okay, This section is a very, very special set of elements. But what we are going to mainly worry about is the rest of the table. First off, our groups are vertically aligned, so they go up and down. Okay, This tells us something about its electrons. Depending on which group it's in, that will tell us how many electrons are in its outer shell. That has to do with its uh, ability to combine with others. Now, when it comes to the period, which is our horizontal rows, okay, and as you see here, period one only has two elements in it, okay, separated by a lot of empty space. They are still both in row one. Same for row two and the same for row three. Okay, this tells us more about, <clears throat> excuse me, more about their, um, what's called electronegativity, which we do not have to worry about. However, understanding that elements are organized by periods and rows, or sorry, excuse me, groups and periods is quite important. So one way that I remember it is that a period goes at the end of a sentence. Well, a sentence is written horizontally, so the periods on the periodic table also go horizontally. Okay, And then, of course, that means groups have to be the opposite, which is up and down, vertical. Now, let's talk for a moment about what is pure and what is considered not pure, um, especially when it comes to elements. It can be quite confusing. So a pure substance is only made up of one kind of atom or molecule. A molecule, of course, being multiple atoms stuck together chemically. Now, we're going to get to an example where we can actually understand that a little bit closer in just a moment. <clears throat> now, a mixture is made up of any different kinds of atoms and molecules combined physically, 
not chemically. So what this means is that since they are physically combined, they can be separated, usually by some kind of process. Okay, well then let's look at these four examples. So we have four gases, first of which is nitrogen. Okay, their chemical notation, or how we write these, okay, is based on its chemical symbol, and then we have what's called subscripts. These subscripts tell us how many of a particular element are there. So nitrogen gas is made up of N2. Well, what this tells us is that there are two atoms of nitrogen in one molecule of nitrogen gas. Now, is this pure? Is this a mixture? Is it an element? Well, the answer is that this is still an element. Even though that there are two, it is an element. Now, when we look at it, okay, go back to our definition, any one kind of atom. Well, we see that there's only one chemical symbol here. That indicates to us that everything that makes up this molecule is the same. Therefore, it's still pure. So let's look at oxygen, what we need to breathe in order to survive. It is written as O2. O2, okay, has one chemical symbol, O, which stands for oxygen. But then we have a subscript 2, telling us that there are two molecules of oxygen, okay, combined. Well, because we are only using one type of atom, this gas is also considered an element. It is still pure. Okay, let's move on. Now we have argon. Argon is a very unique gas. It is found on Earth fairly easily in the atmosphere. But it is also in a very special place on the periodic table where it does not like to react with things. Well, argon's chemical symbol is AR. And as you notice, up here for nitrogen and oxygen, each only had one letter, but that letter was capitalized. The s for argon, argon has two letters, the first one being capitalized and the second one being lowercase. That is the indicator that we are still talking about one element. So just because there are two letters does not mean there are two elements here. We have to pay attention to the capital letters. So the capital A, lowercase r, tells us that this we are dealing with one atom of the element argon. So this too is an element. It is pure. So then our final example, we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Okay, so now we have a couple of different chemical symbols. See how we have two different capital letters? We have a capital C and a capital O. We also have that two. So which one do we have two of? Well, when we look at this, C is right here. If we had multiples of the element carbon, which was what C stands for, in this molecule, there would be a subscript right next to it, down here where my laser pointer is pointing. That number would tell us how many carbons we had. Then we would have our next chemical symbol, which is O for oxygen. Well, this one does have a subscript. Okay, it has a two. So this tells us that we actually have two atoms of oxygen in this molecule. Okay, so let's put it together. Because of that, we see that we have one carbon and two oxygens. So if we were to count up how many elements total, I'm sorry, excuse me, how many atoms total we are dealing with, we would have to take the one atom of carbon and add the two for oxygen for a total of three. So pretty easy, right? Well, what if I asked you how many elements make up this molecule? That gets a little bit different. So we have the element carbon and we have the element oxygen, but we have two oxygens. So does that not add to the number? Well, when we're talking about how many elements, no, it does not. So the total number of elements we have is one carbon and we have oxygen, just one, for a total of two elements that make up this entire molecule. More complex molecules 
like caffeine, have multiple elements throughout. They could have three, four, five, or more elements making it up. Your blood hemoglobin, okay, what tran transports oxygen from your blood and lungs back and forth, okay, has iron in the middle of it. That iron is critical to that process. So therefore, we have to pay attention to the elements that make up a molecule because that can tell us its purpose. So then let's talk about the elements that we find here on Earth. Now, I'm not going to talk about everything on the screen, but you are responsible for the information provided that you see. So you may need to stop and rewind and re-listen a number of times to reach it all. But first off, there are four spheres of the Earth. Okay, we have what's called the lithosphere, the biosphere, hydrosphere, and the atmosphere. Some of these you've probably heard, like the atmosphere, maybe the biosphere. But let's start off with the first one. Let's start off with the lithosphere. Lithosphere is all the solid parts of Earth, all of the rock that makes it up, all of the ground. Think of it like that. And this is where we find rocks and minerals. The most common or most abundant, which that is a very important vocabulary term, so let's make sure we write that down. The most abundant element, or the one we find in the most amount, are oxygen and silicon. Those two make up a majority of all of the Earth. Now, of course, there are small amounts of other elements, aluminum, iron, copper, gold, silver, okay, anything like that that we can take out of the ground is found there, but not in the amount as we do with oxygen and silicon. Now, let's talk the second one. The second sphere is called the biosphere. This is a sphere, per se, but what it contains is all of the living things of Earth. So you, me, the grass and trees outside, your pets, okay, the birds that fly in the air, the whales that fly, sorry, not fly, <laughs> swim in the ocean. All of the living things make up this sphere. So plants and animals, the most common or most abundant elements we find there are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. All of these are required for our bodies to function properly. Therefore, this is why they're found the most. Now, the last two are pretty simple. We have the hydrosphere. This is all of the water that is on Earth. Okay? The main component of the hydrosphere are the oceans, the seas, the lakes, the rivers, anything that's water. And they cover about 70% of the Earth. Well, water is made up of oxygen, and hydrogen atoms. So because this is what makes water, okay, and the hydrosphere is all the water on Earth, these are the two most common, most abundant elements in this sphere. And then the last one, the atmosphere. The atmosphere, we know it very well. It's what has our weather, it's what we breathe, the planes have to fly through it, satellites, uh, we'll look through it down to earth or look at the atmosphere itself, but it's all the air that surrounds us Okay, now remember air is a mixture of things We have lots of gases that we breathe such as nitrogen oxygen We see argon the one we mentioned before these three right here are actually the most abundant uh, elements in the atmosphere you'd actually be surprised to see how much nitrogen versus oxygen versus argon is found in the atmosphere, which we will be looking at closer in class. Now, that's gonna wrap up our first lecture video. So to finish your notes, once you have completed taking all the notes that you would like, I would like for you to uh, go and create three quiz style questions, or what we're gonna call Costas questions in the future, in the questions section of your Cornell notes. Now, to receive credit for watching this video and uh, making your notes, you must have this portion along with your notes and everything else set up correctly. So you must do this correctly, just like we did in class. Okay, so if you need a reminder, let me take you back. Okay, you should have notes. And I'm looking for three 
quiz style questions in this section of the notes. Make sure that the answer to those questions can be found in this section of your paper. If you can have all those all completed by the date that it is due, you will receive credit. Hope everyone has a great rest of your evening. Uh, mine has been great. I'm glad to see you guys here, and I look forward to seeing you in class next time. All right. Peace.